In this example, we're being asked to compute the forces in members BC, which is this horizontal member here, BG, this diagonal member here, and GH, which is this horizontal member on the top cord, okay? So in this truss, uh, notice that we've got three applied loads. We have a vertical two kip load at joint B, we have a vertical three kip load at joint C, and then a horizontal one kip load at joint F. And notice the dimension lines. We have uh, two eight foot dimension lines, uh, two center 10 foot dimension lines in the horizontal direction, and then a vertical 10 foot dimension line as well. So uh, again, we're being asked to compute the uh, member forces in, in these three members. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we obviously, we use method of sections, all right? So we're gonna make a note of this. We're gonna say use method of sections since we only are interested in three member forces. And remember we said that method of joints would also work. I mean, we could use method of joints, but method of joints is used more often when you want all the member forces in a truss, whereas method of sections, we're more interested in specific members. But you'll get the same answer whether you use method of joints or method of sections. But we're gonna use method of sections. Now, the next thing we need to keep in mind is how do we, how do we start the method of sections process? Well, in order to start it, Remember, we pass a cut section through the members of interest. So we're gonna pass this cut section through these three members right here and look at a free body diagram of either one side of the truss or the other uh, with respect to that cut section. Now, here's what you gotta ask yourself. Do we need to solve for external reactions first? And the answer is gonna be yes to that, okay? So we're gonna say note, we need to solve for at least some external reactions before applying method of sections. So my question is why? Why do we have to do that? Well, look at this. If we make this cut section here, okay, we make this cut section here um, through the three members of interest, no matter which free body diagram you look at, whether you look at this free body diagram right here, right? If we peel this off and we look at this free body diagram, or we when we make our cut section, if we look at this right free body diagram, no matter which free body diagram we have, we will have an external support reaction in either of those free body diagrams, right? So if we looked at a left free body diagram, um, we have the roller at A in that free body diagram. If we look at a right free body diagram, we have the pin at E in that free body diagram. So no matter how you, how you slice it, um, you got to you gotta have some of the external reactions at least on one side or the other, okay? So that's what we mean by do we have to solve for externals first and the answer is yes. So how about this? When we do method of sections here and we make this cut section, what side of the uh, truss do you wanna look at? Remember, you could analyze either side. You could analyze the left or the right side of that cut, okay? It doesn't matter, you should get the same thing no matter what. How about we look at the left side. So I'm just saying, let's for our purpose, let's look at the left side right here. If we do that, we need to get A sub Y, okay? Or if we looked at the right side, we would need to get, we would need to get EY and EX both, all right? So I'm gonna say, let's look at the left side, all right? So um, let's make a note. We're gonna say when, when using method of sections, let's analyze the left free body diagram. And again, you could look at the right free body diagram, that's fine too. I'm saying let's look at the left because notice if we look at this left free body diagram, it's a lot smaller. There's less things going on 
on the left free body diagram compared to a right free body diagram over here. So that's why I said that. So in order to, um, to um, uh, look at the left free body diagram, we need a Y, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just to make this uh, go a little faster. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, use my original figure as my global free body diagram, right? My overall free body diagram. So here's E y and ex but again if i'm gonna if i've decided i'm gonna look at a left free body diagram all i really need is a y okay and note that's a roller there so you just have an a y there so let's do that let's say some of the moments about point e equals zero counterclockwise positive and let's solve for e y for a y so we're gonna have minus a y right uh times looks like uh 20 plus 16 so times 36 feet and then we're gonna have plus two kips times its perpendicular distance, which is 28 feet. Then we're gonna have plus three kips times, I believe it's 18 feet. Let's look at that, yep. Three kips times 18 feet. And don't forget about this one kip, right? This one kip is also causing a rotation about point E through a distance of 10 feet, so that'll be um, minus one kip times 10 feet. Minus one kip times 10 feet equals zero. Let's do a little rearranging and solve for this. I'm punching this in my calculator, so maybe a good idea for you to do the same. Two times 28 plus three times 18 minus 10. About 36. So when I punch this through, I get a value of 2.78 kips, and I get a positive value, so it's reacting up, all right? So uh, now that we have this external reaction, I'm gonna make a note, and I'm gonna say now cut through the desired members. All right, so when we make this cut through the desired members, again, we're passing this little cut section right here, and then I'm gonna separate this into two free body diagrams, and I'm gonna look at a left free body diagram, okay? So I'm gonna redraw that, and we're gonna have this member here. And we calculated a 2.78 kips reacting up. And I believe that was two kips, uh, two kip force there. And we have something like this, okay? So this is point A, this is point B, and I think up here was point H, okay, is that right? Yep. So again, remember we made a cut through this, these three members, and when we did that, these internal forces in each of these members became exposed. So we're gonna have an FBC here, an FBG, and an FHG, or GH, however you wanna say it. So this is FBC, this is F um, B G, and then this is F G H here. Make sure I labeled everything correct. Yep. All right. And so this is our free body diagram, and we're going to call this. This is the F B D of left cut section. Okay. It's the free body diagram of what's on the left of that cut section. So if you want to, you you know, we can kind of put um, a little cut section symbol right there or, or you know, um, uh, indicator there that that's where we made the cut, all right? Now, remember, your free body diagram should always have dimension lines on them as well. So we need to put this 10 foot uh, here, and then we put the 8 foot here. Now, um, you really don't need to put this dimension line because notice we've made this cut before uh, the end of this 10 foot dimension line. But if you want to, you can kind of maybe put a dash line here and note that that's 10 feet. But um, I prefer not to do that really, but you can if you want to, okay? So, um, 
So check out this, this uh, cut section. This free body diagram of the left cut section is what? This is a two-dimensional rigid body with three unknown forces. So what do we do? Well, we apply three equilibrium equations to this, right? Some of the forces in the X and Y directions and then some of the moments about a point. So watch what I can do here. I can get kind of slick here. If I say some of the moments about point B, what can I solve for directly? Well, I can solve for FGH directly. Why is that? Well, notice FBG and FBC both pass through point B. So neither of those will show up in, um, in that, free, in that uh, equilibrium equation. I'm going to say some of the moments about B equals zero, counterclockwise positive. <clears throat> when I do that, I'm going to have negative 2.78 kips times 8 feet, right? And then I'm going to, what else am I going to have? Is the 2 kips going to come into play here? No, the 2 kips is going through point B, so that's not going to be there. What about FBG? No way, that's going through point B. What about FBC? No way, that's going through point B. The only other force that's gonna cause a moment about point B is FGH. So we're gonna say minus FGH times 10 feet equals zero. We'll do a little bit of rearranging and FGH is gonna be the following. We're gonna say 2.78 times 8 feet divided by 10. So I get 2.22 kips and I get a negative value. And so that negative 2.22 kips indicates that that force is in compression. So in reality, where is this force pointing? In reality, this force FGH is pointing into that cut or it's pointing to the left, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the actual free body diagram here. Here's my 2.78 kips force. Here's some more unknowns. I still don't know FBC or FBG um, yet, but I do know FGH and that's 2.22 kips. And notice I'm putting, I'm pointing it towards that, that uh, joint right there, okay? Towards that joint. So, um, so keep that in mind, okay? Um, now also if we're drawing, again, free body diagram should have your proper dimension line so that's 10 feet and this right here is eight feet okay now we're ready to go we're, that's one of our answers 2.22 kips what, how do we get these other two forces well we got two more equilibrium equations don't we we can say some of the forces in the y direction and some of the forces in the x direction now notice that we're going to need to get um, this interior angle right here in order to resolve fbc into components so how do we do that well I'm gonna call this theta, and um, hopefully you could you could just kind of look at this original problem and tell me what theta is. So remember th that theta value is right here. So um, can you look at this and tell me without a calculator? I'm about to tell you. So pause the video if you want to think about it for a second. But notice this this has a base dimension of 10 feet and a height of 10 feet. So theta should be a 45 degree angle, right? If you don't believe me, do do uh, arc tangent of 10 over 10 in your calculator, but this is 45 degrees. All right, so now we can uh, say some of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and we're gonna say 2.78 kips, and then we're gonna say plus FBC times the sine of 45 degrees equals zero, and that's the only thing in the y direction. Oh, no, 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 almost made a boo-boo. Almost made a boo-boo. Forgot this two kips here. Oopsie daisy. Man, I'm glad I caught this right away. Otherwise, I probably would have had to re-record this entire video. <laughs> so uh, minus two kips and plus FBC times 
sine 45 degrees equals zero. Yeah, let's make sure I didn't make any other boo-boos. All right, we're good. And we'll do a little bit of rearranging and we'll solve for FBC as the following. Let's say 2.78 um, 2 minus two kips. And we move it to the other side of the equation. We divide by sine 45. So I get um, a negative 1.103 kips. And again, the negative indicates that that member is in compression. All right, in compression. So uh, what do we do next? Uh, we're almost done. Now we apply some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And we solve for FBC. FBC, this, sorry, this should have all been, check your labels here. This is FBG here. There we go, FBG. What we just solved for was F. BG, I just drew it really badly, FBG there. And this horizontal force is FBC. Okay, it's important to draw your figures nicely. All right, so in the X direction, we got negative 2.22 kips. And um, notice that uh, FBG is actually pointing, pointing towards the joint, right? So we would end up also with a negative 1.2. 103 kips times the cosine of 45 degrees to get its x component here and then we're going to have a plus fbc e uh, yeah fbc equals zero no trig operation here because it's it's horizontal and we'll do a little bit of rearranging and we'll get the following for fbc uh 2.22 plus this value times the cosine 45 degrees. So I get uh, a positive three kips, which is a tensile force. And so in my summary, I'm gonna have FBC is three kips in tension. I'm gonna have FBG is 1.103 kips in compression. And then the very first force I saw for FGH GH is 2.22 kips in compression, and that is it.